On June 6, 1944, thousands of British, Canadian, and American troops, stormed the beaches of Normandy, in the largest amphibious landing in history, in the invasion, that will become known simply, as D-Day. On four out of five landing beaches, the Allies made some progress. The initial reports from the fifth beach, received at headquarters, indicated that disaster was imminent. That beach, was codenamed Omaha. Spreading from villages of Via Via, to Colville, a beach forever since known, as Bloody Omaha, was among the first three beaches, selected in the initial stage of planning, of Operation Overlord. Labeled simply as Beach 313, in the early stage of planning, the 8-kilometer-wide Omaha Beach, was to be a connector, between the American forces, landing on Cotentin Peninsula, and British-Canadian forces to the east. It was clear from the start, that it would not be an easy sight to make an invasion, as it was backed up, by a seemingly impenetrable green wall of bluffs along the beach, which formed a significant tactical obstacle, and were well suited for defense. However, on the other hand, the beach offered a deep water anchorage, making it an ideal location, for an artificial harbor for follow-on operations. Moreover, the terrain behind the beach, was also much more suitable for motor transport, than at neighboring Utah Beach. After all, the invasion planners, worried more about the terrain beyond the beach, than they did about, the beach itself. As a result, despite its flaws, Omaha Beach, was picked as a landing place, simply because there was no better beach, in this part of Normandy. However, it is hard to single out Omaha Beach, from the bigger picture of the invasion of Normandy, which was an integral part, of the bigger plan for an invasion of Europe, codenamed Operation Overlord. Operation Overlord, was a massive operation, assigned to establish a large-scale invasion of mainland Europe, into two separate amphibious assaults, Operation Anvil, landing on the French Mediterranean coast, and Operation codenamed Neptune, a maritime element of the invasion of northwestern France, which included amphibious operations of D-Day. And as such, Operation Neptune, was a cooperative venture, among naval, ground, and air forces. Although the origins, of Operation Overlord, can be traced back to 1941, when the British and Americans, formed their alliance, and when countries agreed that the defeat of Germany, must be a primary goal. The more detailed planning, began on March 12, 1943, when the Allied Combined Chiefs of Staff, appointed Lieutenant General Frederick Morgan of the British Army, as the chief planner for a future invasion of Northwest Europe, entitling him the Chief of Staff, to the Supreme Allied Commander. After careful analysis, of Western Europe's coastline, General Morgan and his planning staff, narrowed the two potential invasion sites. The first site was around Par de Calais, and the second was in Normandy, in the area from Cotentin Peninsula to Caen, or precisely, in the part of Normandy known as Calvados. The invasion site in Par de Calais, was the most logical of the two options. Besides being the narrowest part of English Channel, it was also the closest point on the way to Germany. However, Par de Calais, was also the most strongly defended area, on the entire French coast. In contrast, Normandy, more distant from England, and also farther away, from the Allies' ultimate objective, Germany, with its tidal changes among the most dramatic in the world, was an invasion planner's nightmare. Its only decent port, Cherbourg, was hardly adequate to support the Allies' considerable logistical needs. Nevertheless, Normandy was well within the range of Allied planes, and close enough to Britain, to bring fresh troops and reinforcements. Formidable German defenses, at Par de Calais, forced Allied leaders, during a meeting in Quebec in August 1943, to select Normandy as an invasion site. After all, the Allies had a previous bad experience, with cross-channel invasion. On August 19, 1942, the Allies had tested the German coastal defenses in France, by launching more than 6,000 troops, mainly Canadian, on a large-scale raid, against a small port of Dieppe,
which ended in disaster. Also, in subsequent invasions of North Africa, Sicily, and Italy, despite the Allies' success, each of those landings, had come dangerously close to disaster. While the problems of the North African invasions, in November 1942, could be blamed simply on inexperience, at Sicily, Salerno, and Anzio, real crises erupted, when slim allied beachheads, felt the wrath of German counterattacks, threatening to drive the invaders, back into the sea. To avoid the reoccurrence of such an event, the overlord planners, gathered the largest invasion force, the world has ever seen, with 20 American divisions, 14 British, 3 Canadian, and hundreds of thousands of supporting units of the US 1st, and the British 2nd Army, grouped into the 21st Army Group, under General Bernard Montgomery, of which 150,000, were to land in the first 24 hours. An initial strength of invasion force, of no less than six reinforced infantry divisions, would storm the Normandy beaches from the sea on D-Day, plus three more airborne divisions, scheduled to land the night before, were sufficient to repel any German counterattack. All Allied forces, in northwest Europe, were under the Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force, known simply as Schaefe. Approximately at the same time when Montgomery, who had been shifted in December 1943, from commanding the 8th Army in Italy, took over the 21st Army Group, in January 1944, General Dwight Eisenhower, was appointed Commander of Supreme Headquarters, Allied Expeditionary Force. According to detailed invasion plan, the 2nd British Army, under General Miles Dempsey, would attack with three divisions, which were to land on beaches designated, from west to east as Gold, Juno, and Sword, on the left flank of the invasion force, aiming to take Bayou, Khan, and Cabourg. The 1st U.S. Army, under Lieutenant General Omar Bradley, would attack the other two areas. The 7th Corps, under Major General Joseph Lawton Collins, would land just north of Via Estuary, on a beach designated as Utah, to link up with two airborne divisions, with a mission to cut off the Cotentin Peninsula, and capture the port facilities, at Cherbourg. The landing on Omaha Beach, was the mission of the 5th U.S. Corps, under Major General Leonard Giroux, consisted of the 2nd, 29th and the battle-hardened 1st Infantry Division, already experienced in amphibious operations, taking part in previous landings, in Algeria and Sicily. The bulk of the action of D-Day, fell on the 1st and 29th Divisions, with a relatively simple mission, to secure the beachhead between Port N. Bessin, in the east, and River Via in the west, and establish a connection between American and British areas, from which they would push south towards St. Lo. The 2nd Infantry Division, was to come ashore a few days later, to support the rest of the Corps, on the way south. Omaha Beach, was split into several sub-sectors, designated from west to east, as Charlie, Dog Green, Dog White, Dog Red, Easy Green, Easy Red, Fox Green, and Fox Red. The 116th Regiment of the 29th Infantry Division, would land on Charlie, Dog Green, Dog White, Dog Red, and Easy Green, while the 16th Regiment of the 1st Infantry Division, was to go ashore at Easy Red, Fox Green, and Fox Red. Both regiments, would land abreast with two battalions in the 1st Echelon, with a 3rd Battalion in reserve behind them. A total of nine companies, were to land in the first waves from 6.30 a.m. Each infantry regiment, of the first landing wave, was allotted a tank battalion for fire support, the 741st Tank Battalion, in support of the 16th Regiment, and the 743rd Tank Battalion, supporting the 116th Regiment. Besides tanks and infantry, more than 300 combat engineers, organized into breaching teams, tasked to clear beach obstacles, were to land 10 minutes after the first wave. The following two regiments, scheduled to land in the second wave, were the 115th Regiment of the 29th, and the 18th Regiment of the 1st Division. To secure unity of command, in the critical first stages of invasion, initial landing force, designated as Force O, 
would be under Major General Clarence Hubner, commander of the 1st Infantry Division, including two regiments of the 29th Infantry Division. However, to assist General Hubner, in handling the 29th Division units, the assistant commander of the 29th Division, Brigadier General Norman Cota, would land with the 116th Regiment. Force B, consisted of the 175th Regiment of the 29th Division, and the 26th Regiment of the 1st Infantry Division, and they were scheduled to come on shore, in the afternoon on D-Day, and in the next few days. Later on, after the beachhead is secured, Major General Charles Gerhardt, commander of the 29th Infantry Division, would assume command of all units of his division. The pre-invasion bombardment and artillery support for the first waves of infantry was the task of two old battleships and three light cruisers, supported by 15 destroyers and numerous smaller ships. By then, the experiences of previous amphibious invasions proved that the pre-invasion air and naval bombardments were comforting, but they by no means assured success. Lack of confidence in the naval gunfire capabilities can also be seen in a separate plan, prepared for another imminent threat to the invasion force. At the western end of Omaha sector, some 4.5 kilometers from the landing beach, on top of the 30-meter high cliff at Point du Hoc, the Germans have built a formidable, heavily fortified position, for a coastal battery of six 155mm, old French-made howitzers, positioned in open concrete gun pits. From the prominent cliff top, the howitzers could lay down, a precise fire on both Utah, and Omaha beaches, causing heavy casualties to the landing forces. Consequently, out of 300 German installations in the First Army sector, a coastal battery at Point du Hoc, was prioritized, as the target number one. The mission of eliminating this battery, was widely considered the most dangerous of any assignment on D-Day, and it was given to a specially trained group of men, from the elite 2nd and 5th Ranger Battalions, in a separate operation codenamed Maisie. The 225 men, of Companies E and F of the 2nd Rangers, designated as Force A, would conduct the main assault, scaling the vertical cliffs on the eastern side of Point du Hoc, and Company D, on the western side. Force C, consisting of the remainder of the 2nd Rangers and the 5th Rangers, would remain offshore during the initial assault, ready to reinforce Force A, if the mission proceeded according to plan, or land with the 116th Regiment, if the mission failed, in order to assault Point du Hoc, from the land side. As a part of the pre-invasion planning, in February 1944, the U.S. First Army, conducted a study of the heavy terrain of Omaha Beach. The study concluded that, if defended by an infantry regiment, the configuration of the beach, would multiply the combat power of the German troops entrenched atop the harsh bluffs, and cliffs backing up Omaha Beach, and present a formidable defensive position, which would likely result in heavy casualties for the attacker, who had no place to hide on the featureless beach. Furthermore, the analysis found, that if defended by a full infantry division, the defense would be impenetrable. Also, fixed fortifications, barbed wire, and beach obstacles, were novel to the Allies, as in past amphibious assaults in the Mediterranean, and Pacific, they had never encountered them before, and no one knew what impact they would have, on the first waves of infantry. In early May 1944, the Americans reported, that only a single battalion of infantry, amounting to fewer than 1,000 men, guarded the six kilometers of the beach. This report, would prove to be the most significant mistake in the U.S. plan, as the German forces on Omaha Beach, were more than three times, those anticipated. Ever since the raid on Dieppe, for the past two years, Organization Todd, the German labor force composed of foreign workers, worked hard to build an extensive coastal defenses system and fortifications, known as Atlantic Wall. Spreading along the Atlantic coast, Atlantic Wall, also known as the West Wall, had to protect vulnerable coastal areas, against raids or potential invasions, 
trying to turn Western Europe into a fortress. To strengthen and improve the Atlantic Wall even further, on November 5, 1943, Hitler appointed Field Marshal Erwin Rommel as Inspector General of Defenses in the West. While carrying out his new task, Rommel concluded that the enemy must be defeated in the water within the first 24 hours before reaching the main battle line if the German defense was to be effective. Therefore, Rommel ordered the laying of 200 million mines along the coast to form an initial barrier and the construction of beach obstacles. Between November 1943 and late May 1944, Germans built over half a million anti-invasion obstacles and placed over four million mines along the Atlantic coast. On the 15th of January 1944, Rommel took over the formal command of the 7th and 15th armies, now deployed in his Army Group B, stationed in northern France. The 15th Army held the line along the coastline, around Par de Calais and farther north, while the 7th Army, commanded by General Friedrich Dolman, was stationed in Normandy and nearby Brittany. By 1944, the Germans knew that an Allied invasion of France was inevitable. Both Hitler and the German High Command expected the Allies to land in the narrowest part of the English Channel, somewhere around Par de Calais. To some extent, their belief can be linked to an ingenious Allied deception plan, codenamed Operation Fortitude. Consequently, besides formidable coastal defenses, around Par de Calais, the Germans stationed their best troops. Nevertheless, Rommel did not neglect other vulnerable parts of the French coast. As he considered Normandy, the second best invasion site, he decided to reinforce this weak sector. The 716th Infantry Division, an understrength static division, formed of mostly older conscripts, typically over 35 years old, defended Normandy coast in Calvados area. As part of Rommel's effort to strengthen this area, on March 15, 1944, the 352nd Infantry Division arrived in Bayou to reinforce the 53 kilometers wide defense sector at the beaches of Normandy. The 352nd Infantry Division had been formed in December 1943 near St. Lo, from the remnants of the battered 321st Infantry Division, destroyed in the Soviet counteroffensive, following the Battle of Kursk, with a strong cadre of the battle-hardened veterans, from the Russian front. Two battalions of the 726th Regiment, the 716th Infantry Division, held the beach that would soon be known as Omaha, in a zone the Germans assessed, as a favorable area, for attack from the sea. One of these two battalions, was the so-called Ost Battalion, made up of ex-prisoners of war, of various ethnic groups, captured on the Eastern Front. As a part of defensive preparation, the Germans constructed 13 semi-independent strongpoints, positioned to bring direct fire on the beach, along with many more small pillboxes, trenches and concrete reinforced Tobruk machine gun pits, in the invasion zone, widely spaced on natural protection, offered by reefs and cliffs. From the positions at the higher ground, the Germans could lay murderous machine gun fire, lengthwise down the beach. Besides, there were eight anti-tank gun bunkers along Omaha Beach, including two armed with 88mm guns, and ten others, mostly armed with 50mm anti-tank guns, and many more field guns in open pits, in the various other strong points. Also, there were five old turrets, from obsolete French and German tanks, mounted onto Bruck bunkers, placed along beach. In April 1944, Germans began to lay the obstacles, in the high and low tide area, designed to block, or destroy landing craft approaching the beach. They hoped, that most of the enemy's landing craft, would be wrecked offshore, and the German defenders, would do nothing more, than mopping up the dazed survivors, who managed, to reach the beach. The second line of barriers, about 25 meters closer to shore, were wooden stakes, with mounted anti-tank mines, designed to blow holes in the bottom of landing craft, planted in the sand, facing seaward, 
and buttressed like an enormous tripod. On the shore, the Germans placed the wall of barbed wire, and minefields. A total of 3,700 obstacles, were at Omaha Beach, the highest, density of any of the D-Day beaches. As part of invasion preparation, from January 1944, the Allied Air Force, began with a bombing campaign over France. To deceive Germans, these attacks, were not confined to Normandy alone. In fact, for every bomb dropped on Normandy, three others, had to be dropped on other targets. The effects of the bombing missions, were severe, and felt throughout Western Europe. By the time invasion began, the battle area was destroyed. All major roads and railways, were severely damaged. Unfortunately, on a tactical level, at Omaha Beach, the effects of the bombing campaign, fell short of expectation, with most bombs falling inland, leaving the defenses intact, and the flat open beach, craterless. For the invasion to begin, the overlord planners, specified a set of weather conditions needed. According to weather reports, the right combination of moonlight and suitable tidal conditions, for the landing would be June 5th, 6th, or 7th. The next period, with the same combination of moonlight, and tidal conditions, would occur in late July. Therefore, Eisenhower selected June 5th, for the D-Day. However, on the evening of June 4th, the weather in England was terrible. Heavy winds blew, and rain fell over the channel. In following weather reports, a meteorological team, predicted that the weather would improve sufficiently, so that the invasion could go ahead, on June 6th. Having not many options, after consultation with Schaefe headquarters staff, Eisenhower, postponed the assault, for Tuesday, June 6, 1944. In the early morning, of June 5, thousands of ships, left their ports in southern England, and by the early morning, of June 6, 1944, they were on their positions, just kilometers off the French coast. The invasion of Normandy, was about to begin. In late May 1944, to raise the morale of the invasion troops, General Bradley, visited the 29th Division, during which he said, you men, should consider yourselves lucky, and are to be congratulated. You have ringside seats, at the greatest show, on earth. 